mercy and peace with you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. This last week we had our first faith and family night and it was good. It was an opportunity for us to have uh, some chicken Alfredo and what was the red thing called? Ravioli. Ravioli. So it was very good. This week, we're trying to get rid of some root beer floats. So please, thanks to Thrivent, who came here, we need to clean out our freezer. And so we've got a lot of ice cream and a lot of root beer that we'd like to use up. But the fellowship is what's fun. Normally, we have 10 uh, Wednesdays in the year where we get together. They're called Lent, Wednesdays in Lent, and Advent. And now we're going to be having a few more. Uh, so don't forget the fellowship. My mother and I were raised at St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Edina, Minnesota, 54th in France. And my confirmation pastor was Dr. Harold F. Schweigert. I thought it would be funny if his, if his middle name was Frank. <laughs> Harold Frank Schweigert. Because Schweigert is the meat that you would have. He was related to that family. But my mother always said, you know, you had to go downstairs under, in the undercroft. That's where the church basement ladies prepared the meal and prepared the snacks. We just step outside here and uh, Mel makes the coffee. Where's Mel? Well, he's not even here. <laughs> Let that go on the record. Where's Mal? Oh, yeah. I give him credit one time a year and he's not here. But, and then people sign up for goodies and treats. So we have fellowship right here. You can't hardly miss it. But what my mother and I really appreciated was people got together and started to talk. And you can tell how much people care by how they talk and listen to you. It is awesome. <laughs> Well, here it is. We see today in our text from Philippians chapter 1 that Paul is talking about the fellowship that he has with these people. We are hearing now that he is suffering because of his statements of faith. I don't know about you. Maybe there are some things going on in your life with your family, with cancer, with uh, your, the economy or your job. But yet, we understand that we all go through struggles. I'm dealing with our 10th graders, preparing them for October 26th, when they will take their confirmation vow. One of the most important commandments is, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. What this means is, when you have a right relationship this way, then you will be a blessing to others this way. If this is out of whack, then this is not going to be such a blessing. I often say to other pastors, if you, if you, if you have people's hearts, their pocketbooks are easy. <laughs> but if you don't have their hearts and you preach a sermon on stewardship, in one ear, gone tomorrow. It's not going to be effective. Well, my friends... One man in Florida staged his own death. He had no children and he was wealthy. And he decided to send out a notice about his death to all of his relatives. And what happened is it was a closed casket. Why? He wasn't in there. And all of a sudden he was peering behind the curtain. He wanted to see who was going to come to his funeral. His intention was he's going to rewrite his will based on who showed up and what they said about him. Oh, what a great idea. <laughs> Not everybody has two funerals, but this man did. And what happened was a lot of people that he thought would be there did not show up. And a lot of people he did not expect to be there came and said nice things about what he had done for them. My friends, his millions of dollars did not go where he originally had sent them. 
but they came to those who were worthy. <clears throat> I want you to know that Paul in this text says, literally, whether I live or whether I die, I am the Lord's. You know, he says, I desire to be with Christ. But yet, for your sakes, I am suffering all the day long. My friends, I have to tell you, a woman this week I talked to, she has many problems, and she said to me, I wish I could just go to sleep and not wake up. I wish I could go to sleep and be with Jesus. Her goal was to get rid of these earthly problems. I believe that's what Paul is saying here too. Have you ever had that happen? Have you ever felt, felt so burdened or so overwhelmed by the world that we live in that you have said, I wish I weren't here? Well, that's not your choice. But Paul says what Tim Hall said. Tim Hall went into the doctor with a cough. He's my age. And the doctor says, you have stage four lung cancer, inoperable. You are going to have to have a radical procedure. And what he said to his family is, either way I win. He says, if it works, if the surgery works, I'll be here for your next birthday. But if it doesn't, I'll be with the Lord. Either way, he was going to be a winner. That's what Paul says, because everything is because of Jesus Christ. It's what he has done for us that gives us the confidence of knowing that whether we live or whether we die, we belong to him. I have to tell you, my friends, people called me this week and they were afraid. They were afraid about certain things, family relationships, cancer, their jobs. And people go through many difficulties. But I said to them, well, what are you thinking about? Well, if you start thinking negative, there's a downward spiral that occurs. But if you start thinking on those things, read Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Whatever is good, whatever is pure, whatever is honorable, whatever is of good report, if there's anything worthy of excellence, think on these things. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. My friends, listen carefully. You cannot have fear and thanksgiving at the same time. What happens is fear wants to crowd in and take away the joy of your life. But yet, if you focus on that thanksgiving, then it's like telling Satan where to go. Nope. Even in the midst of difficulty, I choose. But it's not fair. It's absolutely not fair. Why should somebody be blessed with this and this and be able to go away for four months in the winter time? I showed some of you over here the tree that was planted the same year that I came to church. It's not in our yard. Uh, the tree that was planted is across the street. Take a look at it as you leave. The cold nipped the top of it. It's already orange. That tree is my litmus test. I know when I have to get my long underwear out <laughs> based on that tree. I will take the, the little ones this week for chapel and I will show them that tree. And I will tell them that the seasons change, but God does not. And hopefully they'll get the point. We live. And if we live with joy, then even the bad things... Could it be that something that you're going through that's bad could be a blessing? Could it be? How many of you remember my cousin Danny that had the, uh, he was having a lower GI and the technician first day on the job, like a rookie, he ended up taking an upper GI. And all of a sudden, they called from the hospital and said, we're so sorry. Uh, Juan, the technician in Southern California, because he's the Juan, <laughs> he, uh, he made a mistake. And then he said, oh, by the way, your doctor wants you to call him right away. 
Juan made a mistake. He took the wrong picture. He took the lower and he needed to take the upper. Well, he needed to take the lower and he took the upper and it turned out that he had a spot on his lung. It was called black lung. No signs, no symptoms. And they took out a third of his upper lobe and he's alive today. If they hadn't found it, he may have died. Think about it. That mistake, as costly as it was, saved his life. God can do that. God can turn bad things into good things. And I want you to know he does. But it's not fair. I say again, it's not fair. Think about the text. The people that went out into the field from 9 o'clock in the morning, they worked their tails off. <sighs> Can't wait. We're going to get a bonus. How many of you would like to get a bonus at work? Yeah, my bonus is, you're fired. You have the rest of your life off. <laughs> uh, it's not going to work. Because I'm married. And that's not going to work. But the bottom line is, no, God says, think on positive things. So when finally those who came up said, hey, we're, gr we're grumbly, we're irritable, we didn't get what we thought we should get, and it's not okay. No. Are you envious that I am generous? Oh, my friends, God is generous. He chooses to forgive you. He chooses to forgive me. He chooses to forgive us, even though we do not deserve it. But yet, on my last day, when I stand before the Lord, and I'm going to say to him, you know, he'll say to me, why should I let you into my kingdom? Am I going to say, well, the Vikings were better <laughs> this year. Or am I going to say, I actually trim the hedge like my wife asked me to do for the last 22 years. No, it's not about what I do it's, or what I've done, but it's about what God has done. And I will, at my last day, say, just like Martin Luther, we are all but beggars before the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus died so that I might live. That's my message, and I'm a broken record. Get used to it. <clears throat> I want you to think about three things. Three things that are positive in your life. Go ahead. I'll wait. For some of us, it might take a little bit longer. For some of us who have funeral this week, or for some of us that are going to go back and get results from the doctor, for some of us who are just not happy because we don't think we get what we deserve. For some of us, it might take a little bit more to be thankful. But I today, my friends, am thankful for three things. We have some of the boats here. Take a look at those boats. If you know anybody who needs a boat, we need the money bad. Thank Mr. Hallberg. Ever since the days of Dick Gregerson, he's been giving us boats. But this, my friends, is the first year he's given us the boats and the trailer. And one man said to me as I picked him up, he said, The trailer's worth more than the boat, Pastor. <laughs> the trailers are worth more than the boats in some cases. So we hope to be winners. My projection is, if we don't sell the boats right away, on October 19th, when we have booyah. I'd like to have a special day. Uh, we're raising funds for our intern for his seminary education. But I'd like to have a booyah, and of course that's the good Nelson booyah, a boat, and bingo, blowout. I'd like to get the Lions Club to count and get us a permit. We'll play bingo. Uh, how many of you have played bingo? How many of you have played bingo with me? That's the issue. I love it. Uh, hold your cards. There might be another bingo here. I'd like to be able to have fun with you while we can. Because there will come a day when God will turn out the lights on you and or me. But when that day happens, who's a winner? Pray with me. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father. Help us to focus on those things that are positive and good and loving and special. Help us to focus on Jesus. Amen. Amen.